My name is Oliver. I have quite a few slides. Um, people say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. Again, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, playing, too, playing games is too difficult. You need to like learn the controls and read the story and like get better at video games, get like better at the progress of the game. And, and if, you, if you're not good at these things, you might get stuck at the video game. Like, no, I don't want this. Uh, I don't want to do this. I'm a programmer. I know how to program. So how hard can it be to make a thing that plays the games for me, right? Oh, OK. Um, there's a game called Shapeout on Android. Looks like this. Uh, each time you click on the tile, another tile drops down. And what you want to do is you want to make a whole shape. So this would be a good case. If you have a whole shape, the thing breaks and more tiles drop down. It's really fun. It's still on Android. Uh, so I made a bot that plays it, runs the Android simulator, um, and tries to detect, uh, yeah, plays the game for me, basically. So this is the, the bot playing it. Um, you detect the board state with OpenCV. Actually, a nice, simple color detection works on that. Uh, I count the number of happy squares, which are all squares that have the green edges connected to other green edges. So every edge here is happy except the bottom right one, because the top isn't connected to a green. Oh, sorry. So they need to face each other. Cool. So that works. Uh, you can then do a BFS through all the simulated. Uh, you can simulate the state and do a BFS and count like how many happy edges you have. So that works. Uh, there's a game called Bejeweled 3. Uh, looks like this. Very fun. Um, thankfully, the gems are, are all different colors, so you can do the similar shape out thing. Um, the best move is a bit trickier there. Um, so what I did instead is uh, I made a large collection of possible moves, and then I just went through them and tried to find uh, the, if I found the thing that was at the, at the end of the array, that was the move I wanted. I can't do that one. Let's do the next one. And I thought, I thought this was going to be really slow. Uh, oh, and it takes a screenshot of the game and then processes the whole thing. Uh, no, it's not slow. Now, this is the, you see it? Do you see it? <laughs> do you notice it? No, let's do it frame by frame. It found a match there, the green to the yellow. The next frame, it found another match. I did not know that you can match another while the other one was still resolving. Uh, the third frame, it found the bottom silver one. So it's actually doing three at once. That's pretty neat. It takes a screenshot. This, yeah. Uh, Doom. Doom is a fun game. Looks like this. Very gory. Um, so the thing, uh, Jason did a thing a few years ago where he wanted to port Doom to C++. Uh, then Patricia Oz got interested in it and wanted to port Doom uh, more over to C++. So naturally, I was dragged in. Um, Doom is deterministic. So any random thing that happens in Doom uh, is using this table. So if you want the random thing to happen in the game, you pick a number from the table, and then you increment the counter. And then the next random thing in the game picks the next number. So when you're playing the game, you can just record the button presses that you did each frame, save them to a file. You can then play that file again, and then you're seeing yourself play the game. These are called demo files. Uh, they look like this. This is a tool to read demo files. And there on the left are all the button presses that you did. Um, and because it's deterministic and everything that's happening in the game is, is doing this, um, you can run a command line argument for the game where you get a little table of what you did in the game. I played for this many seconds. I killed these many things. Um, so I can make a script that plays the game. Then there's a diff on a known good play session with the play session that just happened. We can run it in CI. So, Doom is running on GitHub, which is neat. So, Pokemon. Oh, and Street Fighter. That's the last one I have. 50 seconds. Let's go. It's a table. What Pokemon is strong against another Pokemon? You do double damage and that kind of thing. Uh, same table exists for Street Fighter. It's not as fun. You would agree. Yeah, it's not as cool. Um, but what you can do is you can create like these simulated automatas where each pixel is a Pokemon. And it's looking around other Pokemons to see which one I can fight. And it picks the, the weakest Pokemon. So based on the table, like, ah, this Pokemon can actually do more damage to the other one. Same thing with Street Fighter. And if you run this, you get these beautiful little simulated automata. Uh, the, the big blob is a damage thing called Dark, which is apparently good. I have no idea. I don't play these games. <laughs> so uh, 
two, one, code. There we go. Thank you.